Hello. This is a historical building I just had to throw into my video. We're going to start with preparatory lessons. This is for early intermediate kalimba players who already know major sharp scales, tuning a kalimba, and much more. Please consider watching my earlier videos to gain the full benefits of my techniques. Welcome to this channel. My name is Nessa, newly engineered self-substitute enemy for Ina Kalimba. We're asking that you have a to-do list, which includes playing flat scales, playing minor scales, and playing key changes. I have to say, in this preparatory session, I will review the order of flats and advanced finger patterns to play with many keys on the kalimba. Today I will show you how to find relative minor keys and the notes and using two methods ah, on that. I will show you that major keys can easily be found when you know <clears throat> the minor keys and that can happen even when you only know the minor keys. Ah. It is important to understand why relative key major and minor scales are important and why they are played. I will mention the different minor scales, okay? Uh, and one thing about my limitations on my sheet music is that it is limited. The software only has 120 beats per minute and I cannot add any key signatures. Therefore, you'll see the key signatures are not going to be on any of the sheet music I use, but rather you will see each note will have flat signs written in front of them as needed, okay? The circle of fifths will include having a circle of fifths in front of you so that you can count the notes. Each major has a relative minor. And so you will use the circle of fifths. You already know that there are inharmonic equivalents on the circle of fifths. But the important thing is to have a circle of fifths using methods of finding the relative minor scales. Why are minor scales important? Well, they're easy to sing, read, and they sound nice. And identifying minor scales will help a lot when you want to get the correct tone, tension, or resolution of a song. The Aeolian mode is also another name for the minor scales. Always count three semitones clockwise and do not include the first letter when using the wheel of fifths. The first example, you see flat major, it has seven flats. You start one, two, three, you end up on A flat. That is the relative minor of C flat major. This example is G flat major. You count from D, one, two, three, you end up on E flat, and E flat minor is the relative minor of G flat major. I don't have the inharmonic equivalent. A flat major, count one, two, three, end up on F, and F will be your F minor, natural scale, for A flat major. The next example is E flat major. Count one, two, three, end up on C minor, and C minor natural is the uh, minor for that note. The next example is B flat major. You count one, two, three around, end up on G major, that is a sharp. But remember, the relative minor keys keep the same key signature as their major key. So even though it is on the side where it's sharp, it's actually going to be a G flat minor with one flat. Just keep that in mind.
And then finally we have the F flat major, and D minor is its relative minor. And remember, it's going to have the same key signature, one flat. Okay, it's time for a quiz. I've written out a sample of the circle of fits. And on this one, I would like for you to write the relative minor scales. And there is a way that you can just screenshot it or write it on a separate sheet of paper, the relative minors. And then use the circle of fits. I want you to find that relative minors. So remember, minors on the inside, majors on the outside, left side are for flats, right side for sharps. Here's a second method using the sixth degree, and it's really easy. All you have to do is write out your letter scale, and the sixth degree, the sixth note, is always going to be your minor. It's as simple as that. Writing out the letters and counting the sixth note. Here is a sample. Sorry about the image, but what I was trying to demonstrate is that the sixth degree can be seen vertically on this chart. Okay, so I think that pretty much winds it up for everything here. We're going to be going into the next section, which is talking about how to find minor scales when you don't know the major scales. Nah, that's going to be a challenge. So let's look to that right now. Oh, quiz. Write down that sixth degree. Find them on the chart. Now I want you to find the major key and when you only know the minor key. Again, it is a matter of using the circle of fits. Using the circle of fits, for example, C, you count C plus C, D, E and you will find that E is the major relative scale. Knowing the minor and finding the major, you simply just count three letter notes and there you go, boom, C, D, E. You do include the first note. All you have to do is count three semitones, including the first note. Now, how do we find out whether a piece of music is in a major or minor scale? It's not easy. They share the same key signature. What you really have to do is look at it. Look at the music. Listen to the music. Watch the chords. See where the flats or sharps are. Or wherever the notes tend to be more frequent. That will be the key that you're playing in. One last note about minors. There are harmonic minors, melodic minors, and parallel minors. That's beyond the scope of this video, but I did just want to mention that so that you know um, that our kalimba is not designed really to play that. You can do some melodic minors. You might even be able to play some parallel minors, but you do need to tweak your kalimba or modulate or make some adjustments in the sheet music that you're trying to play so that you can get the correct tone and melody for the other minor scales. And I think that pretty much concludes everything that we need to just kind of basically brush over in the beginning. Thanks for listening.